Let's get right into it. We're going to start with the district level elections. There's a story here um, on citynewsroom.com. You can go over to take a look at that um, as we read. Uh, district level elections have exposed Jimenez's incompetence. This is coming from um, the Deputy General Secretary of the National Democratic Congress, Mustafa Bande. Um, he has attributed the challenges that interrupted Tuesday's um, assemb uh, assembly and unit committee elections in some voting centers across the country to the poor leadership uh, skills of the of Ghana's electoral commissioner. Okay, uh, Mustafa Bande, in an interview on Eyewitness News on CTFM, said the NDC followed the election processes very closely um, to ensure electoral mistakes that plagued the polls did not reoccur in the general elections 2024. And I quote, we are very interested and we have been very much interested in the activities of this election because it has a bearing on the next elections that will be organized. So we followed keenly as the uh, district assembly elections are concerned. The situation that we find ourselves in as a nation is largely because we have an electoral commissioner who does not believe in consensus building and does not want to learn. We have avoided this, we, could, we would have avoided this situation if she had engaged stakeholders and had been willing to do what was right, okay? And um, he, he goes on there. You can go on to read that article um, there. Um, he says, let me just quickly read this part. He says, what is more shocking is, is that six hours before the election, the commissioner did not envisage that inventory might not have reached the centers and she did not even check to ensure that they were in order this clearly tells us that we are dealing with uh, jean mensa who is largely incompetent and has demonstrated low experience in terms of um, election management it's a it's dangerous to go into 2024 particularly if the same personality is still going to be our electoral commissioner now quickly let me read something from Codeo. now challenges faced during uh, dle's unfortunate ec must take responsibility this is coming from Codeo. now the coalition of domestic election observers Codeo, has described as unfortunate challenges that bedeviled the district level elections held nationwide on tuesday December 19th. Now, Cordeo blamed the Electoral Commission for not living up to its task and urged it to do better. Reports of non-functioning of the biometric veri verification device uh, used for verification and delays in the distribution of voting items to some centers hampered the process in some areas. Also, voting in some centers was postponed due to errors detected on the ballot papers. Um, and in an interview with uh, City News, the coordinator of Codeo, National Coordinator of Codeo, Albert Ahin, said the Electoral Commission must take lessons from this process. And let me quickly quote. I saw some places where, for example, if the candidate's name is Ahin, they put maybe Kofi or Kwame there, which shouldn't be the case. Uh, which shouldn't have been the case. Uh, th that is putting somebody's name under a different picture or something. These mistakes should have been corrected by sending people. If, for example, you're printing for a particular region or district, the district director should have been there with the team to be doing some of these correction. So that is managerial. And he goes on to talk further about the various challenges there. You can go on and read those artic this, these articles that I've read to you. Um, but let me uh, quickly um, introduce uh, to the set, I mentioned he'll be here and he is with us now, uh, Prof. Sharif Khalid, he's the NDC communication team member. You're welcome. Thank you so much. How are you doing? Great, thank wonderful, you. Wonderful, right. wonderful. It's good to have you here. Good to have you. All right. And then good to be before the studio. All right. So, um, George, let yeah. me start with you. Um, your thoughts on the election proper itself and then the fallout and the various commentaries that uh, 
you know, associated. Okay, thank you. <coughs> good morning again, and uh, good morning to Prof. Uh, yes, uh, local level elections are very important in uh, our democratic structure uh, because of our resolve uh, to engulf the process of the concept of devolution of power. And so once we want power to get down to the people mm. and let the people exercise the same power uh, amongst themselves uh, to bring development at the grassroots level, mm. uh, the district assembly concept is fantastic. And so every day I get the opportunity, I commend Professor Kwame Ahoy and his team for putting these uh, together. And, and it's formed the basis of engaging people in our democratic process when, when we got in, mm. you know, from 88, you know, 93, when we were doing the engagement and, sorry, 91, 92, yeah. uh, to move into democracy. Mm. Uh, it had then created a consciousness among people. So we've embraced it. And, and again, they decided it should be nonpartisan then yes uh things have evolved up to now and some of us are pushing for it to be partisan mm. uh, as we speak if you go on on social media yeah. you can see the, uh, the tabulation the number of seats the ndc is getting and the number of seats the mpp so that is the issue yeah. you know the ndc when when the president proposed this embraced it but we we understood the uh, point of departure that the DCs should be nonpartisan, mm. and because we wanted everything to be, you know, the president had had to withdraw that. But uh, it's good. We've, we've had the elections. You've read the infractions. My good friend, uh, Deputy General Secretary Mustafa Gbandi, uh, has come out with sometimes he's too uh, strong appointment on, on, on the <laughs> <laughs> electoral commissioner. Uh, but that's him, you know. Uh, but I think that, that these infractions characterize some of these elections mm. but some too are avoidable as you said if if people had been there to go through the details and the processes you didn't have their names a male's name going for a female and all that these are painful infractions to be honest mm. when you get to the ballot the place <coughs> and they say you cannot vote mm. because mm. So a fault of not yeah not it's you, not your, your fault, fault yeah. somebody's fault is preventing mm, you from mm, exercising mm. your especially when you don't live near that yes you travel all the way you travel to get there and then it's like you can't you know it's so painful yeah, yeah, you get it yeah, and so yeah, yeah, we should yeah. do everything to mm. avoid uh, some of these things up to today exercising democracy for all these who are from 88 up to this point. I'm talking about the mm, assembly mm, concept mm, and then mm. uh, our general democracy from 92 up till now, uh, we should be getting away and the use of biometrics should be taking us away from some of these uh, little infractions or, or challenges. Uh, having said that, the response again, the low turnout, mm. uh, it's been so with, with district uh, level elections. Yeah. If you look at the data, it was 88, 89 that we had over 59%. Mm. From there, it's, it's, been, it's dropping. been dropping yeah. uh, to where we are. We were trying, the minister for local government wanted to hit about 50%. Uh, I think another group was projecting 70 that mm. Parliament said it was not attainable. And yeah. I agreed with Parliament mm. that it was not attainable. So uh, whatever it is, as we speak, some districts are going to vote tomorrow. Yes. Do you get it? Yes. Uh, and, and, and this, uh, you remember there was an election and we said, tot, tot. <laughs> 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 Let's try to avoid some of these things. Yeah. But the understanding, the acceptance and appreciation of the whole concept is something that I appreciate. Mm. Uh, some, those, some are making the argument, those who think like I do as, as an MPP person, uh, that we need to make it political. Let's, let's make it political. But uh, there are others who believe that there are people in academia and, and other areas who don't want to associate and yet still want to bring their contributions. Mm. You get it? They mm. don't want to be partisan, mm. but they want to participate in the process. Mm. Such people, I saw a lawyer, a Benta area, there was a lawyer contested. Mm. Okay, another place, I saw a doctor, I said, mm. wow, it's good. Yeah. But at local level. So we need such brains to be there. However, whilst I was excited, the concept of the district assembly as uh, espoused or proposed by Professor Hoy and his mm. team, mm. Uh, that, 30% appointments and co. Yeah. Unfortunately, we politicians have bastardized that. 
The brain behind it was to get the technocrats, the experts into the assembly. Because they will not go and contest. Mm. You get it. Mm. But you need their expertise in running the local level business. So then, because you are an expert in A, B, C, D, we appoint you as government appointee. Okay. However, we now just appoint work like that. party politics and then, you know, they mm. go to represent there instead mm. of the expert. Mm. For instance, Cape Coast, University of Cape Coast. So if you have assembly, you need some professors, dons of academia yeah. in there. So you need to bring them there. Mm. Okay, but we hardly do that. Okay, that is what I think we should look at and, and see. But their response generally, I think we need to be engaging people to see that this is very important. Mm. Uh, the local level election is as important as the general election itself. And so okay. this forms the basis okay. uh, for the build-up of our democracy. Mm. Uh, let's, let's make it work. Last yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, the EC, uh, they've, they've played their part. Uh, I wouldn't say it's, it's completely the best. Uh, these challenges are avoidable. And if they are in an electoral process, we should do everything mm. to avoid them. Mm. Because elections can make <coughs> or mar mm. the unity of the nation. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Prof, now, um, I'm a little surprised, actually, yeah. that um, we had these challenges that have been, um, we've witnessed. Yeah. I'm actually a little surprised because the EC was involved in the various elections um, for both NDC and MPP in terms of the different levels yeah. and so on and so forth. Yeah. So I don't know what happened, you know, with this one. Of course, the numbers are, the, 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 the space is bigger, yeah. you know, and everything else. But still, I mean, I don't understand what happened. Well, it's, it's a very rude shock not just to you, mm. but to me and many other aspects, mm. and well-meaning Ghanaians as far as uh, the elections are concerned. And uh, I remember making a point on Metro TV a few months ago mm. in the run-up to the registration mm. exercise mm. and when the process was ongoing and how the EC was handling this, mm. right, where there was very poor stakeholder engagement. So these are, or these issues that are beginning to crack and reveal themselves yeah. is what most of us were calling against which the EC failed to insulate itself against. And mm. for me, what is worrying is that this is an election that has not, this is probably a miniature yeah. of a national election yeah. in character, but percentage-wise, they didn't even get up to close to the targeted percentage mm. they needed as far as the electoral process is concerned, mm. right? If with this minimum level or minimal level of percentages, we're having these infractions, right, and challenges, how is the 2024 elections going to look like? Mm. So this is Warren. It's mimicking the 2024 election. It's already dent a credibility blow mm. on the EC as far as the 2024 election or electioneering process is concerned. Mm. And I think it's about time the EC came out to really inject confidence into the good people of mm. Ghana as far as the 2024 election mm. is concerned. Because we have, you know, a few months to an election year, mm. you know, barely, technically 10 months you know, minus Christmas and all yeah. of that happening. Yeah. And we've just had a test case, which is future-proofing mm. against <laughs> an election in 2024, yeah. and this is what we are witnessing. Mm. How is this confidence, mm. Mm. right, in a constitutionally, you know, cladded body? Yeah. Right, so I think that the EC chair should be hauled before parliament to answer some questions, and mm. this would say that we are actually calling her to be accountable, mm. and she and her deputies mm. to be accountable and really give us confidence or give the pe good people of Ghana a certain level of confidence mm. via parliament that come 2024, we're not we'll, going to have we'll these have kind these, of issues. Yeah. Right. So, but if you look at the process of... Prof, uh, it's good you're going back to IPAC. So. <laughs> well, <yeah. laughs> we're a democratic party. <laughs> we're a democratic <laughs> party, <laughs> remember? <laughs> yeah, do that, do no, that. No, no, no. no, no. We, we are representing yeah. the good yeah. people of Ghana, yeah. and we believe that yeah. our, our absence there might, you know, allow or permit some of these things to happen. Yeah. Since uh, the MPP uh, see nothing wrong when they are in power, right, with, of, with, regarding decisions that the EC are taking. Because I remember we were fighting for this registration exercise. They were mute about it, mm. right? But we had to fight it. So we saw that, okay, well, to represent the good people of Ghana, we had to go back to IPAC mm. and make the cases there mm. and push it forward. Because mm. you look at all of these issues rearing their ugly heads, mm. and it's not looking pretty uh, mm. in the run-up to 2024. Yeah. So we want to give just not Ghana, but the world 
a credible elections. And that is what we are beginning to inject into this process and by our return to IPAC. And I think you had to pat us at the back for doing that because, you know, it was an activist move we took, right, which was in the right direction because we needed to register a certain level of displeasure. <laughs> and by doing that, we had to boycott it. Now we've, you know, consol uh, consolidated all our, you know, engagements with our party yeah. and beginning to, you know, listen to the good people of Ghana and especially so seeing what is happening at the hierarchy and apex mm. of the EC, we thought that it is prudent we get in mm. and get things fixed right. Mm. right. But, she, but, but the same person that you are, you are chastising um, actually commended you for returning to IPAC and was looking forward to engaging well, positively. Well, I'm not Is chastising. It? The word shouldn't be. No, We're not you chastising, okay. but just general uh, comments by uh, um, the Deputy uh, General Secretary and, and others yeah. have been, you know, that of chastisement. Well, I mean, you see, uh, elections are a very critical exercise, mm. okay? And the outlook and posture mm. of an individual, mm. because I always say, you know, you look at offices like uh, EC is an office. Yes. It is not an individual. It's not a person, it's yeah. not a person mm. right? So we just had Jane Mensah who mm. is probably leading it. Mm. But if there are certain character traits that have been revealing of time past mm. and ought to be corrected, sometimes it may come out as an antagonistic perspective, okay. but as part of our democratic engagement mm. and process. Mm. So sometimes it's, it's political lingua. Okay. Fair, fair, All right. fair, fair, That's good. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. That's good. You must make your case. Yeah, yeah, okay. 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 That's um, good. But, but generally speaking, um, yeah. how do we as a people, and this is just to both of you, yeah. how do we as a people um, create the, the, the groundswell of excitement yeah. that will let people come out mm -hmm. to vote? for this level of elections. You see, because it's easy when it comes to national elections because yeah. there's a lot of hype, there's a lot of um, campaigning, there's posters, there's billboards, there's well, all kinds of things that go along with it. So it's exciting, right? But this one, doesn't, it seems very I think there are answers I would ask. You know why? We're talking about, you know, there, there, I think there's a conflation mm. between making the exercise a partisan one and a political one. Mm. It is a political one. Okay. So it's a, because it's a political process. Yes. Yeah. But the partisanship dimension yeah. is what we tend to conflict sometimes. Yeah. And the part the, the the you know the the ingredient of the partisanship, yeah. you know, we have a de facto partisan presence. Mm. Right? Mm. If we made it very very overt that yeah. This is between MPP and NDC, mm. you might, or the CPP and the likes of that. Yeah. The excitement might probably be injected because now yeah. it has become a partisan exercise. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't see anything wrong with it. You go to other jurisdictions, right? They would say, okay, well, he's a Labour chancellor, which is quite a like yeah. local government. It's common. He's, yeah, he's yeah. a conservative uh, uh, chancellor. So mm. then we begin to do that because I always say, look, it's just not our district assembly elections. Mm. It has to do with certain public service yeah. holders. We talk about our judges and all of those things. You know, getting to know your partisan uh, inclinations yeah. or position yeah. is a certain level of accountability. Yes, such that if I know Judge A is MPP or NDC, mm. the bar or the ethical bar within which I would judge you is probably higher when you are sitting on a case that mm. is different to that. Mm. But we tend to hide these things and say, oh, don't be. And yet, we you know, know. covertly, <laughs> or, you know, de facto, <laughs> we are partisan. And when that happens, it kills you know, that mm. accountability rubric that we mm. could have looked at, and it, you know, it lowers the bar in how we could engage with our processes. So I think there's nothing wrong with being partisan. I don't know why we've always made it an issue, yeah. right? To yeah. say that, oh, yeah, yeah, he's a political person, he's that, and I, I even think that the, um, the DC, M M the MMDC level yeah. should become partisan. That's my own, own yeah. opinion, because I feel, I feel yeah. as though, um, I understand the argument that says the president wants or should be able to appoint people that defer to him, you know, at all those at that level, you know, all over the country. I understand that logic. But are we running the country for the people or for ourselves? It's for the people. So if that's be the case, then the people should be able to have a stake to say 
in this district, this is the person we chose. Yes. I, I, that's why, I mean, for me, now you must sense. be accountable. To you that. must be accountable. Because, to the because sometimes the person feels he's appointed from Accra, yes. as though he's accountable to Accra, to only, and not uh, the local yeah, people. Uh, okay? So. And so you, you, sometimes no. there, are, there, are, there are disagreement between chiefs mm. and M MMDCs. Yes, so nobody happens every time. Yes. 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 You know, the mistake we're making is that mm. if you look at, if, <laughs> if we look at the real political process, <laughs> okay. the base should actually be the powerhouse. Yes, yes. Not yes. Yes, it's not Accra. Right. It's, it's not Accra. Yeah. Yes. So, but it's about how yes. we've turned we these things, tended. but we've turned it around, and Accra yeah. has become a concentration yes. point. Mm. That's right. what the president felt. Let's do the election. Yeah, and you agreed, and then you go to a point where you decided to backtrack. Well, you think so? <laughs> right? But we'll bring that conversation again. I mean, again every change is no, 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 yes. yes. no, 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 I thought this yes. will be our coming but back. But any everything this, this uh, Mr. President wants to do in this country, he goes ahead to do it. Like, why wouldn't he go ahead? No, and we do need this? a bipartisan. Since when? <laughs> <laughs> okay, <guys. laughs> you got it. And last one, uh, as you yeah, said, yeah. how do we inject excitement? Mm. You know, there's no, correct me if I'm wrong, emoluments for the assembly people. Okay. I'm, I'm, you mean as They're in for their sitting, work? Yeah, for, their, for work. their work. So mm. it's a voluntary work. Mm. And, you know, the person when he's coming, mm. his financial push, you know, to yeah. excite the base to do the campaign. Mm. If somebody prof were contesting for parliament, he's going to find resources to push the campaign, right? Mm. Well, but so this answers the question of <laughs> my advocacy yes. of political party funding. Involvement. Funding. Okay, funding. 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 So if we pass yes, a legislation, that, that one, right? Yes, that In one. that case, from yes. parliamentary to yes. local level, yes. there's yes. a percentage yes. of it that goes yes. to the parties to yes. support people. Yeah. Mm. And you have a budget yeah. which you can go about. But they see right. it has some budgets for this one. They do oh, really? community yes, they, they do yeah. community engagement. They bring manifesto okay. nights. Yeah, okay. they, they bring the people on a platform. Okay. You do your presentation and okay. go, and that, okay. then you go and continue. I think a week or some days yes, to okay. the election. So it tells you yes. that there is a lot of investment yes. into that for yes. the yes. election. Yes. It's just yes. that we've not we yes. taken our partisan lenses yes. to, to, to actually yes. give it the yes. lens. Yes. Right so now we, now that we've started collating data, <laughs> <laughs>